<laughs> I'm gonna do this. <laughs> hey, it's time for an introduction, folks. With an accent that he once described as reminiscent of Heather and Shortbread Pins, Billy Connolly has made the journey from the shipyards of Glasgow to become Britain's undisputed king of comedy. How big is Billy in Britain? Well, here, here he is on stage on one of five sold-out nights at a most prestigious venue indeed, London's Royal Albert Hall. <laughs> we welcome Glasgow's own Billy Connolly to Lifetime. That was before the song, uh, Don't Worry, Be Happy, of course. Oh, Paul, absolutely, right? yeah, that makes me fun and ripping me off all the time. <laughs> <laughs> the worries have fled since that music? Or yeah, do you hate yeah. that tune like a lot of people do? I like it, and I, I always, I can see this guy on, now it's at Madison Avenue, or Park Avenue, the, the, I was in New York, it was only about four or five weeks ago, and, I, and a guy was going along with a Sony Walkman singing that. <laughs> so every time I hear it, I think of him. He looks great, this guy in the street. I think it's a wonderful song. I like McFerrin, I think he's brilliant. Well, there's a lot of brilliant people out there, but you're, you're among them. You. I'm okay, I, I don't... <laughs> I'm all right, I'm in good shape, you know. For comedy, I'm, I'm doing no bad, I must say. And you're on a nationwide tour of Canada, where yeah. people can... Here people can understand the accent and get the humor and, and they don't take offense, right? No, they're, they're okay here. I like the people here. You know, it's... Uh, but I was really worried before there was so few Canadian comedians, you know. When I first came here, there was none. Except that impersonator down in Los Angeles, down in Vegas. Was it Rich Little? He's okay. Yeah. Yes, yes. I was thinking of the other I, kind of impersonator, but... I, no, you know, those guys. And no, not those young street ones, but they... <laughs> <laughs> And Halloween and Young Street was good, but they, it, it was good. I, but now, because of comedy stores, they're getting a lot of comedians from here now, you know. Because I, I always found Canadians very funny, you know, about themselves. You know, if you talk to taxi drivers, they're always real funny guys and everything. And I always wondered why there wasn't more, but I guess the comedy stores have done it. Well, and they've they... always kind of taken to me, so I like it here. Well, you know, when, when you and I were both younger, the thing to do was to pick up a guitar, which you yes, did, and I be did. a folk singer. And now, uh, they're, and now people are coming up and doing stand-up. So you or... have to change, because the, the, the audience for wailing songs is so limited. You know? <laughs> <laughs> did you used to get up there and wail and I sing that? No, I was thinking of the shoals of herring. I was singing about herring all night. It has its limitations. <laughs> Dead miners, you know. Oh, I'll never forget that terrible day in October. Oh, come on. The guys in the audience trying to pull women. Oh, <laughs> mining disaster. But it's part of the Scots heritage, isn't it? I mean, it is, though. They love whining. Oh, terrible. Another thing about... There used to, there used to be a man in Glasgow who sold newspapers, and he used to just crack me up. He just had a bunch of papers over his arm and he'd go, Terrible, horrible! Terrible, horrible! <laughs> and people... Your headline here, right? People would rush up and buy one. See what's happening? This is terrible, horrible! <laughs> and it, it never fails with the Scots, you know. Or, or death, they're in love with death. They love funerals, you know. It's great. I love Scottish funerals myself. Glasgow funerals, you know. There's an old saying in Scotland, there's more fun at a Glasgow funeral than at an Edinburgh wedding. <laughs> <laughs> now that... I've been to Edinburgh and I miss Glasgow. Edinburgh's, Edinburgh's quite proper, isn't well, it? It's quite prim and proper. And, and rightly so. It's the sort of headquarters of the sort of civil service, the banking, all that, government stuff. The Glasgow is the industrial side, the immigrant side, you know, and it has that, it has humour because it has the Irish infusion uh, as well as the Scottish Celtic side. Scottish Celtic side's very dark, you know, tragedian, poetic, savagery. And uh, the, the Irish has the lyrical side, and it's given them this lovely mixture in the west of Scotland. The east was more civil service, weaving, farming, and it has, it's got more of an Anglo-Saxon feel, the east, you know, the, uh, the Edinburgh side. So it's, it's a good mixture. You know, Glasgow's better, but it's a good mixture. Well, that's all I hear. But it's changed, right? They've scrubbed up Glasgow, and so the... Uh, Sun, but the it's, like, it's like they found a sunroof could open, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, I don't recognise it, you know. It's, I used to love Glasgow, but I don't live there anymore. And you know, like, when you live away, you you, you, you don't like change in your old town. You want it to stay exactly the same, because suddenly you don't know where to pee anymore. <laughs> you know, you know that way when you're walking in town, there's always places you could have a cup of tea or go to the toilet there. Or go into, suddenly they change it. It's all vine bars and, and croissant shops. <laughs> you know, and you've got your knees together. Right? Croissant parlour. <laughs> I liked it when it was all grim and everybody was scared of it. You're so... Uh, <laughs> what, what am I going to say? <laughs> You're so much traveled now. You go around the world so much. That, where do you base yourself? Where is home? What's I the... live in Windsor. 
Yeah. Near your, near your friends, the royal family? Near my friends, the royal <laughs> It's true. <laughs> it's taken everybody by storm. When I was at the royal wedding, you see. Yes, of the Yorks. I met, yeah, I met the Duchess at that the a, a shoot. It was a clay pigeon. Jackie Stewart has a clay pigeon shoot for charity, and I was there, and I met her. And she invited me to the wedding, you see. So I went, and it caused some kind of... <laughs> it was like, you know... Salman and Rusty having tea with the Ayatollah. Because <laughs> I had made all these jokes about And I'm not a monarchist, you see. I never have been a monarchist. I'm also not for dragging them out and shooting them, but I, I, don't, I don't like that whole British privilege system. And I've been against it all my life. But, um, but they are my friends. So, you know, I, I, we have dinner and, and I make... But it's, it took the press by storm. It, they, they took it very badly. Well, the press is... It's, it's strange over there, isn't it? I it's, mean, they'll, they'll get... Scum! <laughs> oh, yes. I mean, don't try and find good reasons for it. They're highly paid, underworked, overfed scum. Yeah, <laughs> basically. And liars, you know. I mean, I've tried to find nice reasons for these people lying about me, but there are none. They're just scum, you know. Good to be here in Canada, <laughs> where all of our news people are here. In a nice, clean Canada. I love it. But it's, no, there's a, there two distinctive sections of the British press. You have the Times, the Guardian, and the Independent, the Telegraph, meh, on, on that side. And on the other side, you have the scum. They just lie and cheat, and, and they're politi politically motivated. But that separates them from the National Enquirer. It doesn't even pretend to be a newspaper, you see. But they are like trash with a political line, which makes them dangerous. And, and somewhere someone's saying, horrible, terrible. Terrible, horrible! <laughs> terrible, horrible! <laughs> Let me ask you this, Billy. Are they starting to get it in the United States? When you first went there, I don't think they knew. I mean, there's, there's a story about you being in the Roxy in L.A., and, and nobody knew what no, you were... They didn't know I was on stage. They just, they just <laughs> didn't stop talking. They just all talking, rabbit, rabbit, rabbit. And I was on stage, and I said, well, look, this is ridiculous. You don't like me, and I certainly don't like you. <laughs> Good night. I've got better things to do with my life. You know, and I went off stage, and, and nobody went boo his. They just didn't know I'd been there. <laughs> because they were obviously experimenting with soft drugs, Your Honor, right? And most of them, was, most of them hadn't had a pupil in their eye for three months. Or, or getting the point of the first joke on their way home. You know, oh, yeah, that guy was okay. <laughs> Driving home at three miles an hour, you know. So the, I, I, I abandoned that, but I've been back since. I did two concerts in Los Angeles, and it was brilliant. So I think being on David Letterman helped. And it's really weird, because the audience kind of look at me like I've just arrived from Venus. And they don't, they're not sure whether to laugh, because I, I tell like stories and bits and pieces, and they're not sure what to do. But, they're, but they get an amazing response every time I'm on, apparently, from the guys at home. So it's quite difficult sitting there with these dinglings in the audience hoping that the people at home are enjoying it. I kind of find it difficult. My life's difficult. But it is successful. It's very enjoyable. Billy and Albert, the record of yours that I own, you at Royal Albert Hall, double platinum. That is hot stuff. It's a double platinum video, and I've never seen one of them. Well, we'll have to keep your... But they're making here. me one. I can't wait to have a wee look. <laughs> well, it's wonderful you had a wee look in our, in our, in our little home here today. Yeah, Thank I've been you here so before. I used to do AM here. Oh. Well, wonderful. Um, <laughs> Delightful to see you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Billy. It's a pleasure. Next, 